Okay, um, welcome. I have recorded previously uh, installation of uh, IntelliJ and configuration of IntelliJ uh, last year in 2017. Uh, this year they renamed some of the packages and some of the setups, so I will go over it again. Uh, I have installed um, Goland, uh, which is the dedicated ID for Go, but I think it's the same as the plugins which are in IntelliJ IDEA. And IntelliJ gives you the ability to install additional um, additional plugins for other languages, uh, Python, HTML, CSS, and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit better to use uh, IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. So I have. Um, I have downloaded it. I will install it now. Um, so give me a second. Okay. Installing. And we will configure it from the scratch. To have a clean, clean setup. Most of the things which I told last year are the same. Um, the basic concepts are identical. They improved some of the things. They are a bit more streamlined. So we should be good. Let's fire it up. IntelliJ IDEA. I will need to. Um, login with my IntelliJ or JetBrains account. Uh, use the NTNU um, email address so then you will get access to the full ultimate version. I will not import any settings, it's the fresh install. I like the dark scheme. Um, yeah, the difference here is um, slightly different um, key bindings in the new idea. So those are the uh, the default uh, key bindings that used to be there. I will use the the new ones. Yep. All right, and it allows me to pick default plugins. Um, okay, I can use, I could use version control. Idea has a lot of tools enabled by default. All right, so all those are kind of enabled by default. Great. Um, I like Vim. Um, I will do some Node.js development. Yes, that's also good to have. I will skip Scala for now. All right. Okay. I already have it licensed to me because I've used uh, Goland and I used my JetBrains account, so hopefully that's that was needed. So I'm running 2018 2.3 um, for educational use only. Great, sounds good. So what we will do now, we will go to, yeah, first we'll check for any updates. We good to go. Um, so let me just close those. We will go to preferences before starting any new projects because we need the Go plugin. So if we 
look for Go. We have Google App Engine integration, which comes by default. We go to Browse. We go Go again. So we will use this one. And I think that's all we need for now. So let's see. Go templating engine. Well, we could use Go templating agent uh, engine. So we will use this one. And we will use the main one. And in the main one, it says. This plugin extends IntelliJ platform with Go specific coding assistance and tools integration and has everything you could find in Goland. So it, has, it is effectively the same functionality as Goland. So we will install that as well. We will close. Ah, uh, yeah, in fact, we will apply. We'll go back to the and we'll restart IntelliJ now. So I have both, I have Goland and IntelliJ installed, uh, but I prefer to use IntelliJ with the plugin. Um, well, we will enable this one. And in the meantime, I will unmount the drives that I've mounted to install the packages. All right, so we all good. We create new project. We will pick Go. We have to pick our SDK. So it recognizes that I have Go installed in user slash local slash Go. So I pick it, uh, it will index my current go path. Um, I don't have much in my go path. Uh, in fact, um, let me see. I don't even have go path set, right? So we need to change that. So I will go to my home directory. I will make folder called go work and I will edit my bash profile on Mac it's um, you could use um, yeah let's check what's uh, the suggested uh, Mac OS uh, bash profile so Bash profile is sort of the uh, dot bash profile is the recommended uh, default uh, script for bash. So we will do that and we will export uh, go path to be uh, users gtl go work. And we can also export path to include, um, so path is the same as the normal path plus go path slash bin. So inside the go work folder, I will have bin source and so on. Um, and the bin will provide me some executables. So if I have this line, it gives me ability to run them from the um, directly from the command line. So I will save it. I will source it. So my um, my path is um, my paths are set and go path is set. So if I use 
echo go path. I have it set now correctly. So if I go, if I go to it, I am inside my user slash um, GTL slash go work. So we good to go. We go back here. Index and I go path done. I don't want SQL support at the moment. I will call it um, project awesome. And it by default it puts the projects inside idea projects awesome, um, which is not ideal. Uh, let me cancel this. Uh, let me cancel IntelliJ again. All right, and if I try to run it again, I didn't have my go path set up, so hopefully it can recognize where my go path is and it will default to a proper place. You can have um, go projects in different go path per project. You don't have to have in your global um, uh, setup. But let's see, no SDK, SDK 1.1, index, next, no, it didn't change it, okay. I will call it awesome and I will point it to my Go folder. So I will say, um, GTL, go work and I would like to have the project location awesome okay so now that folder doesn't exist it will create one yes I can spend some time reading the tips later I have my awesome project in go work to verify that I do have it there. Uh, I will go to, uh, in fact, um, yeah, we've done it a little bit wrong. So um, my project is directly in the uh, root of the go work. Uh, it would be good if it's in source. Um, so we can move it later. For now, we'll just try whether it works well. So let me create new Go file. We call it main and we say generate a simple application, which is very minimalistic. So I have my main Go file and we can do some, um, so I can do print line hello world. Okay, um, notice that when I save it, it doesn't run the imports and it also doesn't run any formatting. So if I save it like this, it saves it even though the formatting is not that nice. Um, so, you can um, build the, the file, um, but I would like the formatting and the imports to sort of uh, happen automatically when I'm saving the file. So, yep, it seems to be doing the imports now by default, but it doesn't do the formatting. So let me just check if I go to preferences and I go to tools. Yeah, those who those of you who are using um, Vim, it's good to have the Vim emulation turned on and you do that by um, by the IDEA Vim package. So I have it installed and it's uh, enabled by default. So then you can configure various things. Uh, but what we really want is we want file watcher plugin. So let me check. Um, let's browse the repositories. File watchers. 
I want this plugin. Again, we need to restart. Restart. Yeah, take some time. Uh, what file watchers is it allows you to enable certain actions when the files on the file system are changed so in particular what I would like to have is I would like to run um, Go imports so the imports are um, uploaded automatically and um, in my source and Okay, we've detected Go path great um, yep, I don't want to add extra libraries at the moment. So, if I go to preferences now and tools, I will have file watchers plugin. And then pressing the plus allows me to import, to do the go imports automatically. So, I would like to have this done. Uh, yes. Yeah, very nice. It will do all the necessary um, installations for Go imports to work. And I can keep it as it is. Press OK. Um, apply. OK. So there were some installations that happened. So now if I do some um, some modifications and save the file, um, hopefully it will run uh, it will run the uh, go imports. Well, I already have the import, so let me delete this and see if it actually works. Yeah, it sort of worked before. It still seem not to be formatting, um, so I'm not sure why it doesn't format. Um, okay, let me enable the formatting as well. Technically, you should not need to go format because um, the Go imports also formats the sources. And I also want the metal inter. Um, yes, I want Go to install it. So apart from formatting the code, it kind of gives you some um, hints what might you might be doing wrong and what um, you're doing in a... Um, yeah, the way that can be improved. So it has all the kind of a linting support uh, enabled by default. It's, it's a little bit verbose. Um, yeah, so it, it ran the go get uh, metal linter for me. Um, there is one extra thing that I will do. Um, so I will go back to because um, Metal Inter usually misses some of the uh, additional plugins for itself. So I will kind of run the Metal Inter manually and it lists all the um, linter checks that it will have enabled by default. Right, so it has uh, a number of checks it will run. Uh, so it kind of, in, you know, installs um, all those um, Um, tools that are used for the linter to execute. Um, so I will have it installed in my um, Go path. So now if I go, I have some binaries. I have my awesome, which I will move. I have my awesome package, which I will move into source. And then if I go to source, I will have some um, 
GitHub and Golang uh, modules that we just installed for the for the linter and for the formatting and so on. So if I go back um, to IntelliJ um, and I save Let's say we do, we change to print. Um, with capital H, we save it. Um, I am executing the linter task and it checks my uh, source file for any problems. And I don't have any at the moment. So I can kind of close this and let's Let's introduce a struct. Um, let, let me give a short break. Student, um, which is a struct, and it has a name, this is a string. So if I save that, I should have um, right so um, because I I've moved the project uh, already I have to enable the file watchers for this project so the setup that we did for file watchers is only for the project, right? So we have, um, we want go imports, we want go metalinter, and I believe go imports will do the formatting. If you want the global setup you will have to change um, change here when you when you do that uh, into global yeah let's do go formatting as well all right so having that done if we save the file so let's add h which is an int which actually will force the file to be changed and then the file watchers kick in because the file watchers check the file in the file system and as you can see I have a warning saying exported type student should have a comment or be unexported so a linter is complaining about the student type that is exported because of capital S um, and um, presents Student represents a student instance. Then if I save that, the linter runs again and I have no window, I have no errors, I have no problems. There is still a small linter uh, warning that I get here. So the, the building analysis happens and it says I have an unused type. But apart from that, everything um, is set and my um, my linter and my um, automatic importing facility is all configured and works fine. So the remaining thing is we will check this um, running option and what I've done I um, moved so as you remember I had um, so I, if I go to my home folder, if I go to my go path, which is my go work, and then I had awesome here, uh, but awesome should really be inside source slash uh, local. So what I've done, I went to source, I created, uh, I've, I've done a command which created me a local uh, folder, so I have local, and then inside local, I moved uh, from upstairs the awesome project into here, which resulted in me now having an awesome project here. Um, 
So what I need to do now, I need to remove my old project from IntelliJ and set up this new one that I just moved from the original location. Uh, the good thing about keeping it proper is that now if I say go build a uh, local awesome, I can, um, yeah, so it says we are, we, we've already have it built. It's, um, it's already there. So if I go to awesome, so remove awesome, awesome, and I go build um, CD awesome. Yep. So if I remove go path bin. package well go build local awesome yes it builds so now if I list I have the executable build inside my uh, source folder so I am inside source local awesome and I have my binary here if I say go install uh, so if I try to run awesome without if, if I want to run awesome I would have to say awesome right then it will print hello world if I want to run awesome in the global it says yeah I didn't find it but if I say go install local awesome it actually copies the file into the go path bin and then because I placed go path bin into my path if I now type awesome without the dot slash it will run right because if I say which awesome you're running it will tell me well I'm running the one inside your go work bin awesome right um, so let's clear it up um, I will remove that file And I will also remove awesome from the current folder. So I don't have it. I don't have the binary here and I don't have it in the in the main. Right? In the bin. Uh, go path bin. So now having moved the project and having all the command line tools working with the with the go path properly, I have to remove it from IntelliJ and add it again. So that's what I will do now. it in the IntelliJ. So in, in IntelliJ um, we will see the run options again and this time I should be able to run a module or a package. We will remove this one so I will uh, remove it and import the project afresh because I have it in that different location now. Uh, as you can see, it points to my go path automatically, and I have my awesome package. So I will open it. Um, yeah, let me check. Yeah, project name is awesome. It's go work source local awesome. Yes. No, I don't want to overwrite it. So let me see. Let me see if I can import it. Yes, I can. Yeah, it has to be a folder. Okay, so let's overwrite it. Yes. Finish. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Okay. So now if I add configuration, 
I say build and we say package and it says local awesome. Great. So now if I save it, ah, uh, I didn't, I should change it to, for example, main. So to run the whole package executable main, I will call it main. So now if I run it, I have some um, compilation errors. Okay. Compilation failed. All files are up to date. Uh, but it doesn't run. Okay, let me check. Okay, so we don't have, uh, because we imported the project, um, we don't have um, uh, the project settings associated with, um, yeah, it might be here. Yeah, we have to pick um, the project SDK. So we have to associate it with the, uh, go. So let me see project new Yeah, let me cancel that. Maybe it's in the other settings. Um, No, so it's not that. Um, yes, I know. But it doesn't give me an option for Go. For associating this project with Go. So that's quite unfortunate. Um, so let me see. There is nothing here. I don't have any Go specific things. Okay, let me check the global preferences. So, We only have Android SDK. And we don't get any Go SDK options. Go root. Yeah, so let's have that set. Let's see if that will help. So what I did, I set up a globally uh, Go root for the IntelliJ. Uh, so if I try to build it now, yes, it looks up to date. And now it works. So now the project is associated. So if I go file project structure, project, well, it's still doesn't say it, it is associated with Go, but somehow it knows um, that it is a Go project now, even though it still complains that because building works, uh, building doesn't give us any problem. And if I change, um, so 
if I say again, save this. Um, yeah, so it uh, also the building linter complains that uh, I have an unused type that I don't use anywhere. Uh, so if I build that and run it, I have hello world again. So all is set um, and we have kind of a working Go environment for doing more complicated things, uh, working on modules and whatnot. So that's it. Um, thank you for attention and this can be treated as a short update on where things are in the new plugin. Um, hopefully it kind of explains how to do a bit of troubleshooting and what you need to do. Uh, in general you have to have in preferences, you have to go to your go root and have this set up. Um, and when you're creating a new project, it's kind of um, it will ask you it, it will ask you, so if you say new Go project, it kind of asks you here what is your Go version that you're using and then everything is wired up properly. Um, so that's it. Uh, in terms of running configurations, you just use Go build. Um, you have it ticked and then you can use the package if you're using the uh, proper Go path. If you're not, you should be fine using a directory uh, of where you are. All right, thank you.